Okay, this is what we're going to end up with in the final analysis. Uh, going into Ethernet port 0 is the ISP modem. Um, that's where the Internet's going to come from. We're going to fit the whole modem in there, of course, uh, just the Ethernet cable. Uh, coming out of port number 1 will be our primary subnet that we're going to give to the business. It's going to be based on a .89 subnet, but it can be anything you would want yours to be. And 2, 3, and 4 are a special switch that would all remain on the same subnet if you want it. So let's start with uh, in Windows 10, we're going to right-click on our internet connection on one of our adapters, go to uh, Network and Internet Settings. From there, we'll click on Ethernet and choose Adapter or Change Adapter Options. And that'll give you a screen that looks similar to this, although you may only have a few of these. Um, our, uh, we're going to run a line from your computer to port zero of your edge router. So we're not going to have any cables plugged into it at all, just one cable now running from port zero to your computer. I'm going to right click on that. That is my port zero. I've got it named uh, in a custom way, but that's what it is. And then we're going to double click on the IP version four and edit these settings. Okay, that's what we're going to set them to. IP address 192.168.1.100, subnet mask 255, 255, 255, and 0. We're going to leave the DNS unchanged at the bottom. We can click validate, OK, and OK. That'll take a second and then confirm that no problems were found. Beautiful. This will allow us to now enter into the um, default settings of the uh, edge router. So let's go ahead and type in the IP address 1.1 and hit enter. And advanced, accept the risk, continue past any of those warnings. And the default username and password is UBNT and UBNT and we'll log in. That'll take a, a little bit to connect. We are always going to answer yes to the basic setup wizard. Okay, that'll bring you to this screen. <clears throat> We're going to leave internet port uh, ETH0 as it is. Our provider is a cable provider, not PPOE. We don't need a static internet. Uh, we don't need static on port 0. So just to keep it simple, we're not going to change anything on this page. We're going to put in the password, which is the same thing as it started with, UBNT, and apply. It lets us know that the internet, is, our router is going to go down, internet's going to go down, sure, apply, and reboot. And yes, I'm sure, I'm sure. Okay, now we need to set our Ethernet adapter back to the way it was initially. So we're going to right click on that bottom one, choose our IPv4, remove those settings, OK and OK. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and disable the other one so we can be sure of where we're getting our internet from. Bring up a browser, pick a random website. Uh, we'll click on a link while we're there, okay, so we know all that's working like it's supposed to. To take that a step further, let's uh, open a command prompt and type in ipconfig. And as you can see, we're getting the .1 um, subnet from the router, which is its default behavior on uh, bottom main. So we know that's all working the way it's supposed to. Time to reload the router software and log back in and continue. There's one thing I want to note here. You'll notice um, that the local, this is uh, ETH1, which is the DHCP that the uh, edge router is giving us is a dot one subnet at 192.168.1. You've got to be careful that the modem that's handing off DHCP to your edge device doesn't have the same subnet and many of them do. So you're going to want to change that in your uh, ISP modem or whatever device is handing you the DHCP so that it is on a unique 
addressing scheme and not the same one that the uh, edge router is putting, putting out. Well, you'll have collisions and nothing will work as you expect it to. Okay, on this next step, we're going to change the dot one dot one that they give us by default to something we like to use for our own purposes, which is dot eight nine dot one. So it'll be unconventional and immediately recognizable. However, before we do that, we need to remove the cable that is currently plugged into ETH1 and move it over to ETH4 um, because this is going to change. It's going to be .89. Our computer is not going to respond to that. If we put it on ETH2, 3, or 4, the Edge OS will automatically assign it to a 192.168.2 subnet and that's the default behavior. So when we do the basic setup, ports 2, 3, and 4 are all put on that dot .2 subnet. And just to verify that, we're going to do an IP config release and renew. There it is right there on the uh, bottom main, as expected. We should now be able to load up our uh, edge operating system a router with that dot two address. Okay, and you can see here, uh, I actually plugged the wire into port four. I think I may have said port two earlier. I did move it over to port four just to, so I can see what's happening from two to three to four. And uh, in fact, it kept it on the same subnet as three and two would be, which is 192.168.2. So if you plug it into two, three, or four, you're going to end up with the same subnet, which is dot two dot one. Okay, we're now going to configure uh, the port ETH one and change it from dot one to what we want it to be. And we're just going to change the dot one dot one to a dot eight nine dot one, and save that. And we can see it changed the subnet as we expected over here to dot eight nine. We are not out of the woods yet. Uh, even though we've changed it to a dot eight nine, we have yet to create a DHCP server, which is going to provide those IP addresses for any of the clients that come on board. So let's go ahead and uh, click on the services tab at the top. And you'll notice we have a couple of LANs in there. These were created during the basic setup stage at the very beginning. It created one for the port one and a LAN two, which is a switch comprised of port two, three, and four. We've got to get rid of LAN one. We don't want it giving out dot one addresses on the network no matter what. And you can't edit and change. You have to remove the entire LAN. So we'll come over to actions, click delete, Yes, confirm. Okay, let's click Add DHCP Server. We'll give it a, a, friendly, a friendly name. I'm going to just call it LAN1, and I'll put an 89 after it, uh, separated by hyphens. Okay, so you can just repeat that, and um, make sure you click Enable at the end, change it to whatever subnet you want for yours to be, and click Save. Okay, <clears throat> so this should give us what we need. At this point, I'm going to remove the cable from uh, ETH4, put it onto ETH1, refresh our release, our IP config, and we should be uh, on board at the .89 subnet. All right, we'll do that right here. Out of the switch, which is known as switch zero, and put it back into ETH1. All right, that finished, and voila, we have our IP address, which is uh, 89.2 on the uh, bottom main, so we know that's doing what it's supposed to. I we'll have to come back in and enter our .89 on this interface, and as expected, we can get back in. And that's the end of this exercise. Uh, .89 is working. Your clients can get online. We can verify that. If I go into uh, 
services and take a look at my LAN 189 and choose view leases, we can see, in fact, my dot two IP address that I was handed off on my computer. So uh, we're a done deal. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.